Now, Frosty, from counting lines to maybe seven years inside, what exactly happened to Frosty, man? He was just becoming an heir to the light on drill foreign, and now he's basically nowhere to be seen. So in this video, I just wanted to take a look back at the case of Frosty, his journey in music so far, and if there really is any way back for the man. But yeah, with Frosty, we got a very interesting one to dive into, so let's get straight to it. But before we do, make sure to subscribe if you're new around here, drop a like if you're feeling it, and well, let's talk about it. Now, Frosty, a rapper out of Streatham, South London, who started catching traction in the game in a very unique way. Originally having his County Line single drop for a random YouTube channel, Frosty at just 17 would earn millions of views with a track popping up in YouTube's algorithm, even with the song posted audio alone. Of course, this light tone that almost feels kind of heady one inspired added to his separation from the rest of the UK drill scene, but paired with a much slower flow, he would ride on more stripped back beats, offering Frosty up as an alternative drill rapper. However, before we really dive into the rise of Frosty and the music side of things, we've really got to rewind and take this back to 2018. Now, back in October 2018, police would raid a flat in Guildford investigating the County Lions case. Following the raid, five arrests would be made, one of whom would be in a 19-year-old Theo Beckford, more known as Frosty. With all five pleading guilty in the following hearings, no trial date was immediately set however, would eventually go ahead in April 2019. During that time, however, while importantly waiting a County Lines charge, Frosty's County Lines Part 1 would drop. The song was later down the line confirmed by Frosty to have been leaked after someone discovered the track in SoundCloud and then posted to YouTube. But during this time, Frosty was in fact in jail with his success of County Lines not really known to him until people coming in from roads would tell him that it was ringing in the streets. The song would go on to rake in 4 million views in a couple months, remember on an unknown channel, was soon getting spun on one extra, and even warranted Frosty making County Lines Part 2, again dropped to SoundCloud and leaked by a channel by the name MD, earning 2 million views in the space of one year. Of course, like I touched on earlier, Frosty and the other four involved would end up getting sentenced for their role in a county line operation, with Frosty sentenced to two years imprisoned, warned by the judge with seven years in prison if he was ever convicted for the same crime again. Despite some of Frosty's lyrics from County Lines being played in court, his defense was supported with the fact that following the success of his music career that wasn't even promoted, Frosty was getting offers from labels after they heard him on one extra and was now determined to turn his life around. After the sentencing, BBC Sounds would go on to cover the Frosty case, which which really added to the whole notability of the entire situation. YouTube admits it's been making money from a video created by a convicted drug dealer rapping about his crimes in Guildford. 20-year-old Theo Beckford has recorded a track called County Lines about his gang's drug deals and his news editor Angus Morat is here. Angus, that track mentions murder, drug dealing, the M25 and Beckford's arrests. What do we know about how the video came about? Well, Mike, Theo Beckford calls himself Frosty. He recorded it after his arrest while waiting to go on trial at Guildford Crown Court. His YouTube track has gone viral. It's even had reviews by music critics in America, and it's had almost two and a half million views. And because of that, it has made money for YouTube and for Beckford. And what does YouTube have to say about that? Well, they say now that they've listened to the track and they've decided that the drug dealer's video does not breach its community guidelines. The company says many law-abiding young people use YouTube for different genres of music and quotes, it's important that those acting within the law are given a platform to share content. But it's a rather different view from a senior detective at Surrey Police, Superintendent Pete Fulton. My personal reaction is I think anything that glamorises this is it's really sad, you know, it's a despicable crime. People's lives are ruined because of it, and, and here's someone who is an offender is seeking to glamorise it. It's just really disappointing. So, Angus, YouTube has decided the video will stay up. Yes, that's what they've told us, and that's uh, even though Beckford is a convicted drug dealer, now serving 32 months. After BBC Surrey asked us about the video this week, they've told us, YouTube, that they've demonetized it. That essentially means that they've decided to stop making money from it through adverts. And Aitan Alexander runs a treatment centre for drug addicts in Guildford. He seems, uh, he says it seems it's up to the public to police videos like this. The truth is, is that until someone's monitoring this at the highest level, these things are going to continue to happen. I mean, that's the problem. It's the general public that have to highlight it to the various social media channels. They're the police. Well, Beckford was one of five people convicted last month. He was first spotted by CCTV operators supplying drugs near the Electric Theatre last July. Undercover police tracked him and his gang to a vulnerable woman's flat on Bridge Street. Leslie McCabe went there to talk to Detective Superintendent Mark Chapman. So the case uh, was a typical what's known as a county lines drug dealing operation where 
drug dealers from out of the county of Surrey, from London, come, came down into our community and sought to exploit a vulnerable individual and used that, play, that person's home as a place from which to deal their drugs into uh, Surrey and Guildford residents. So breaking it down then, county lines, the term, is something that I've heard often in the news, but I've never really understood what it means. What are the lines referring to? Is it re referring to the train lines that people are coming in on? What, what, what is it? So, so county lines uh, model relies on the use of a telephone, a dedicated telephone through which individuals order their, order their drugs. The, the offenders make their way down into the area around which that supply is to take place and supply the commodity. Often offenders look to, to, to set up a base within the town, the host town with it, which they're looking to supply their commodity, which is where it comes on to using vulnerable or exploiting vulnerable people, be those uh, children or vulnerable adults uh, in our communities. And those vulnerabilities can be a myriad of things from drug use to depression to loneliness uh, and old age. And where we are right now, on Bridge Street, by the particular flats in question, uh, we're surrounded by shoppers, people going to and from work, going about their business. I guess to the average person, they wouldn't imagine that this kind of thing is going on here in the centre of Guildford. And I think that's what this case serves to demonstrate, is that this has happened right in the centre of Guildford with many people around. And if it, if it can happen here, then it can happen anywhere across our, across our county. Um, and what I would seek to, 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 to do is to ask people to, to just open their eyes, just to look at some of the signs that might have been there, groups of people congregating, more regular visitors to a, to a location, maybe the presence of more drug paraphernalia, and then ask people to just trust their instincts. If they think there's something wrong, then tell us about it. Report it through to Surrey Police, report it through to Crime Stoppers uh, anonymously if they would like to, and even our young people could uh, can, can use the facility that Fearless.org presents around uh, being able to report suspicious activity and things that concern them. So going back to this particular case in question, and we're standing outside the flat that was used, can you describe kind of the comings and goings, what would have been happening that people should be aware of? So, so this, this premises was being used as a base by those from out of town to come into Guildford to be able to supply their, uh, their, 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 their drugs. Um, there were, uh, the market, presented itself around around the location and the, the, the drug dealers were coming to and from that premises to be able to supply those that had ordered it through the lines network. So there would at certain times have been quite a bit of activity coming and going from that location um, that would have been off obvious to, uh, to, to passers-by and certainly to, uh, to neighbours and other, uh, other residents of Bridge Street. Fast forward into the 25th of September 2019, of course having already done time served whilst waiting for a court date, after one more year served, Frosty would be released with the drill scene at his fingertips, especially as earlier that same year, these clips would emerge, just check this out. They're calling it down, AC for Rex and the evidence back. No way, no way. They're calling it down, AC for Rex and the evidence back. No way, no way. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 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 Now, at the time, Kodak Black seemingly co-signing an up-and-coming UK drill rapper was quite unexpected to say the least, causing the clip to go viral, placing even more eyes on the frosty return. Now, putting this one into perspective, if you're familiar with a New York drill rapper by the name 22Gs, he's one of the pioneers in the New York drill scene, currently making a lot of noise out there, but he's actually signed to Kodak Black. Now, unlike a lot of the mainstream US fan base, UK drill is most definitely under the eye of drill rappers coming out of Brooklyn, etc. And so with 22Gs likely to be tapped in, 
him coming across Frosty ain't too unbelievable. As just a few days before Kodak would be listening to Frosty's County Lines, 22Gs would be tweeting this. Back to it though, upon his release, Frosty would stay true to what he explained in court, signing the record deal to Relentless, released his daily duppy just days after returning to the music game, dropped his comeback single H2O, and then doubled down with his collab with the OFB youngers Bando and Else, and even went on to release a County Lines remix with Fredo, and was even featured on the remix of 22G's anthem Suburban Part 2. Just a few months later, signs of a tape from Frosty began circulating with a man dropping three singles in the space of three months, coming in Super Trapper, Happy Hour, and the title track Under Surveillance featuring Unknown T. The tracks would all do decent numbers, but with the mixtape still not arriving for three more months after the last single, the tape would sort of lose its potential in my opinion. Numbers wise, it wouldn't go into chart, however with it holding spaces for Free Bay featuring D-Block Europe's Dive Back LB, Snowballs featuring T-Way, and For Real with Do Road and K-Trap, the whole joint really connected with the culture. Early in August of that year however, snaps would emerge on snapchat with Frosty posting a snap saying back online, apologies for everyone who's been trying to get through to me, for those that don't know I'm back to court next month for an offence that happened in 2018. The police have sat on nearly the same evidence for two years and decided to charge me after I've turned my life around. Next week I need all my fans to sign the petition to help me get this case thrown out or resolved without another prison sentence. And it seems like this really wouldn't help Frosty as just a couple weeks later, he took to Instagram to say the following. Crown Prosecution Service don't give a F if I'm a rapper now, they want me to sit down and do some time, but it's all cool, all my fans can show me how much they got me by streaming the F out of my project when it drops. Now like we mentioned earlier, if Frosty was to commit another county lines crime, like the judge stated all the way back in 2019, Frosty would be facing 7 more years inside. And like these things go, in October 2020, it seemed as though Frosty was back in court over a separate county lines offence dated all the way back in August of 2018. Frosty did in fact again plead guilty to supplying class A drugs within that time frame, leading to Frosty being sentenced to two years in jail, suspended for two years, meaning unless his terms were breached, Frosty was effectively a free man. His table soon dropped following this all being wrapped up, with a Mad About Bars coming after, as well as a track headed by Kenny Allstar titled Come A Long Way, and so again, Frosty was in the clear, right? Well, in February 2021, detectives investigating a county line coming from the capital executed a warrant in Strum, later arresting a man by the name Theo Beckford and was remanded into custody. And that's where Frosty and his journey let off. Across his socials, the last post he made was promoting his tape dropped in November 2020, but with Frosty being remanded, they must have been sat on some real evidence this time and with this court case set to March 17th at Winchester Crown Court, with it almost being one year to the day, it seriously looks like things didn't swing Frosty way. It's unclear how heavily Frosty was ultimately sentenced, I know he was warned with 7 years so you have to feel for the man if it's even close to that. I've seen some rumours that it was a 2 year and 8 month sentencing so in that case we'd see Frosty return at the latest in September 2023, but what exactly happened to Frosty? In short, his past just sort of caught up with him and just like his mixtape described, he was living under surveillance so it was just a matter of time before he was back inside the in some time. I do feel however that whoever is supporting Frosty behind the scenes needs to keep his name alive with his solo drop last coming in December 2020, so just drop some music, whatever it is, just to keep his name out there. But yeah, let me know your voice in the comments down below. You've been listening to The Noise Complaint and I'm out.